Hey guys, it's Becky with Design Bundles and I am super excited to welcome you to the wonderful world of Silhouette Studio. Now Silhouette Studio was designed for the Silhouette family of cutting machines, but that's okay because it is such a robust software and there are so many things you can do with it that truly you don't even have to have a Silhouette to benefit from this software. On top of that, it's free. So you get to try it out for free and see, is this even something I wanna do? Maybe I just bought a Cameo. Maybe I'm thinking about a Cameo. Maybe I don't have a Cameo at all. We are here for you. We have a top 10 things to cover for beginners and we're excited to welcome you into the fold. So grab a notebook. You're going to want to take some notes on the things that we cover and I promise you that by the end of this video, you are going to be ready to jump right in. Alrighty, so as a beginner, it's important to understand where you get the software from. Now, back in the day, Silhouette America used to send a CD disc with the machines, and that's where you could load the software. But luckily, we are much more up to date on that, and you just simply come to the Silhouette America website, and there's this button right here that says software. Now, when it's time to choose which software you want to download, it's important to know that they always have a current version, beta version if possible, and then there are legacy versions. There are different reasons why you would want to install a legacy version, and we won't go into that today, but just know that that is where they are. If somebody suggests that you install a different version than the current version, but for the most part, this current version is where you want to be. And then you can simply select which one works best for you. If you're on a Mac or if you're on a PC and it will download to your computer. So Silhouette Studio is a very robust software, but don't worry, don't let it overwhelm you because today we are going to hit the top 10 things that new beginners should know about using Silhouette Studio. The first thing I want to start with is your page setup menu. Now, I personally feel like the page setup menu is probably the most important menu that you should learn as a beginner because this is a physical representation of the material that you're going to feed into the machine. Okay, so with that being said, this is a representation of the cutting mat and a 12 by 12 piece of material. Now, the type of material at this point does not matter. What we're just going to talk about is the size because what I can do is I can change this size to be whatever I want it to be. Okay, I can simply type in whatever size material. If I'm using a scrap, a six by six, there are some presets also. If you're going to be using letter size, you can select current printer. There are different um, A series sizes. So whatever size you're working with, always start by making the size of your page the size of your material. It's going to be very important. Okay. Next is where you select if you're cutting with or without a cutting mat. Now that is important because if you're cutting without a cutting mat, then your Cameo will only feed in to the top of your material. But if it thinks that you're cutting with a mat, it will feed in this extra inch or so. And I know that doesn't seem like a big deal, but it could be because if I select that I'm cutting without a mat, let me show you what that looks like. This is the material that I'm working with and my Cameo will only feed in a little bit. Okay, so then if I load it with a mat and my Cameo thinks that it's not with a mat, it will start cutting the design too high and you'll lose the top portion of whatever it is you're trying to cut. So always important. Again, this is a physical representation of what you're feeding into your machine. All right, so you can set up your size, your cutting mat with or without. I always recommend that you turn on at least your cut border, but it's not a bad idea to have on your print border as well, especially if you're going to be using the print and cut feature. Now on your panel, you have icons up here at the top. So let's click over to your grid settings and you can turn the grid on and off. But also if you come down here, you can also change 
your divisions, which is sometimes what I like to do. I like to have my spacing at one and my division at one. And basically these are one inch squares that you can now use to help you um, size your design. So that is something to keep in mind. But more importantly, if you turn the grid off altogether, you can see that you have this red line all the way around your material. And then you have this gray line. That is your, the red one is your cut line, your cut border, and the gray one is your print border. So if you keep those on, that is Silhouette Studio's way of guiding you to show you this is your printable area and this is your cuttable area. Now this, especially the print border will change depending on the setup that you have going on your printer and what size page you have. Um, this one right now is keyed into my label printer, so it's a little smaller than usual, but for most of you, you will see a letter size square for your standard home printer. So now let's talk about opening and saving files in Silhouette Studio. Now with the basic edition, which if you're a beginner and that's what you have, that is absolutely okay. The type of file that you will want to open will either be a studio file or a DXF file. Those are the files that are going to be already set up for you to be ready to cut on your machine. Now, I know what you've been asking, but Becky, I thought we could use SVG files. This is technically true, but you do have to upgrade to designer edition or higher to be able to import SVG files. That's okay. We'll talk more about upgrading our software here in a few minutes. But let's talk about just the basics of opening a file. We can go to File and Open. And I'm going to go ahead and show you opening a file that I downloaded from designbundles.net. There we go. Now, it's important to notate that if you have downloaded designs, you want to make sure that you unzip them first. So make a note of that real quick because you can't open files that haven't been unzipped, okay? If you need help doing that, we do have videos on using uh, PNG, SVG, and DXF files in Silhouette Studio. So I'm going to open the DXF file, and I don't know if you noticed or not, but you have these tabs up here at the top. This was the tab that we already had open. This is the tab that opened because we opened a new file. Okay, and that's okay. But say I wanted to add something to this design, what I can do is I can just go to File and Merge. And basically it gives you the option to still add a design to your work area, but it doesn't open a whole new tab. So for example, if I wanted to add one of these pineapples to be able to print and cut, did you notice how that opened right in the same work area that we were already working with. Okay, so that is definitely a thing. And then also, let's talk about this DXF file real quick. You'll see how it broke into all these different parts. When you are working with a DXF file, you will need to select your area, and then you can either group it together or you can make a compound path. We're not going to get too much into making a compound path, but just know that you can do that by right clicking and choosing make a compound path. So now with my file ready to go, I can select a color if I want to fill it in. It does not have to be the color of my vinyl, but that definitely makes it easier. And then I can also change my outline color, but none of that really affects how this is going to cut or what color it's going to cut in. It only makes a difference to you as a person and your visual preferences, um, or if you're using this as a print and cut file and you'll be printing this on your printer. So now let's talk about saving files. You can go to File and Save As, and you will see that you have two options, Save to Hard Drive and Save to Library. I prefer Save to Hard Drive, and I'll tell you why. Saving to hard drive saves it to your computer. Once it's on your computer, it is yours to uh, back up to the cloud. You can, as long as it's your design and you're not copyright infringement, you can send files to friends and share them with other Silhouette users. And then also it saves it in a format that is still editable. Okay, you can open that back up and edit it and make changes to it as you need to. 
Once you save to the library, now the library does have benefits, but once you save to the library, it is saved in that format going forward. And if you want to save a new copy, you are literally saving a whole new copy. So your, your storage could really run out fast. Also, Silhouette Studio does involve cloud storage, but you're limited to what you can do. So a lot of people have expressed frustration in losing designs um, that are supposedly stored on the Silhouette Cloud. And I'm not saying that the cloud is a bad thing or that you can't explore it, but I just feel like I have more control over saving to the hard drive and that's what I do. And then I have an automatic backup service that comes in overnight and saves my files for me. So I don't really have to worry about um, a mass loss of files, which you know makes my stress level down a little bit knowing that all my files are safe. So let's go ahead and talk about sizing and using shapes to help you size. So if I was putting this on a t-shirt, which is what I fully intend to do, then I would know that I could just measure the area. Now, wearing a adult large unisex shirt, I know that I don't want my design to be any wider than 11 inches wide. You'll get more used to that. There are a few sizing guides available to you, but if you're just starting out, don't be afraid to put that shirt on and use a little bit of painter's tape or masking tape. And you can put that tape right on the shirt so that you can take the shirt off and then measure out the area you're working with. Keeping a measuring tape handy is always beneficial because measuring the blank or the substrate that you are using before you cut your vinyl is the best way to make sure that it's not too big or not too small. There's nothing more disappointing than getting done with your cutting and applying and then looking at your finished project and feeling like it's just not the right size for you. And that's okay, because we're going to talk about that a little bit more. For example, if I knew that I was going to put this on a sign, say I'm going to make a sign and I'm going to put this in my craft room, okay? I can use my shapes over here. These are under your drawing tools. And I can draw a rectangle. Now, you'll notice as I'm drawing, my handles and the measuring readout are adjusting, but there's also, if you come over here to your transform panel, transform panel is very important, so make a note to explore that, but we have a scale feature here. And I can simply type in the size of my sign, or say it's a canvas. So let's say that my canvas is an eight by 10. So I can simply type in 10 inches by eight inches, now we do want to unlock our aspect ratio. We can't forget about that. 10 inches by eight inches. And you know, let's move Miss Pineapple here because she's not really helping us along. But now you can see that my design would have been too large for my canvas. So what that means is I can either use my handles to adjust or I can type those in. On this design in particular, I would want to lock my aspect ratio. Now your aspect ratio is whether you want to keep your shape size proportionate or not. So for the rectangle, I did not want to keep it proportionate because I wanted to type in my exact dimensions. But on my design itself, I don't want it to start looking a little wonky. So relocking that aspect ratio is really important. Okay, now I could simply type in nine inches and position it and see how I feel. And I kind of like that. So that's probably the size that I would go with. It's basically giving me a half inch border on each side that I would be able to leave open to make it look more natural and not completely edge to edge. Now, let's talk about using the align tool, okay? Because say I size this design, but I'm having problems getting it to align. You have a few align features. Again, this is in that transform menu. And this is your very first icon up here. You can center to page. Okay, so let's go over and see what that looks like. Okay, and that basically took your entire design. I'm going to turn that grid off. That took your entire design and centered it to your cutting area. But now if I select these two, I also want to make sure that they're centered to each other, right? Because that could be very important. You also have horizontal features. You can center... So there you can align to the left, center, right. You can also do vertical, top, center, 
bottom. Now let's also go ahead and talk about text. You can create text over here on the left hand side and I can type out any text that I want. I'm going to make it larger so you guys can see. And then over here on the right toolbar, I have a text style panel and I can select any font that I have installed on my computer. Now I am going to choose a script font because I think it's important to show you. Let's zoom in. Do you see how these letters overlap? Now that's good because that's what gives your font a nice handwritten even look. But what that means is when you go to cut, these little pieces are gonna be cut into each letter and you don't want that. So what we're going to do is we are going to weld. You can accomplish that by right clicking and choosing weld. And what that does, if we zoom in again, now you'll see that this is all one continuous shape and it's not going to have those individual cuts. So very important that you weld your letters. Now let's also go ahead and talk about font glyphs because those are very important, okay? Glyphs are extra letters and flourishes that come with certain fonts. So for example, this font is called Memories. And if I scroll down, now let me say this Glyphs panel is a feature of the Designer Edition. Just like we talked about with SVGs, this is a feature that's unlocked when you upgrade Silhouette Studio. But I promise we'll talk about that a little bit later. But basically you can scroll down and you get a preview of all the awesome Glyphs and extra letters that come with this font. So for example, if I did not want it to say hello, and maybe I wanted it to say H-E-L-L-O, but with these flourishes on the letters, okay, that's how I would do that. I would be able to select the flourishes that I want, and I can use my keyboard for the other letters that don't necessarily need flourishes. Now, even if you're not real big into flourishes at this time, that's okay. What I want you to see is that there are also certain letter combinations that look better and are provided by your font designer. So for example, if I was going to type out silhouette, that's not a bad look, but let me do that again and show you the difference because this font in particular comes with a double T. So I can just click on the double T and do you see how much better that looks with just the one single crossing line? Okay, rather than the two. So that's something to keep in mind. Even if flourishes aren't for you, those type of letter combinations definitely um, help your design have a better visual appeal. Last but not least, let's talk about when you are ready to install new fonts in your software. Now we can research how to do that on Mac and PC, okay? And we have videos on how to do that. But basically once you, what's important to remember is once you install a new font, you will have to restart Silhouette Studio, okay? So you will want to save whatever you're working on and then go in, install those fonts, close out Silhouette Studio and restart it so that Silhouette Studio can import those fonts for your use. Now that is the only special thing you have to do. Using fonts is really easy in that aspect. All they have to do is be installed on your computer. All right, so let's move on and talk about tracing. Now what I'm gonna do is import an image. And I chose this pineapple because it has that black and white contrast Okay, because you always want, if you can, when you're tracing a design, if you have a black and white option, you will get the best results. Okay, but anything with a high contrast is what you're looking for. Now I'm making this image as large um, as, I don't wanna say as possible because I can make it a lot larger, but I just wanna make this a larger image and I will open my trace panel, select trace area, and I will draw this box around the area that I want to trace. Now it lit up in bright yellow, which is very, very good. You do have a few options for your threshold and your scale. We don't need to mess with those, but just know that they are there. You can increase or decrease your threshold to change the outcome of your traceable area. And then your scale, you can decrease if you're using a design that has a lot of fine details. Just keep those in mind, just know that they're there. Now you want to hit trace. You do not want to hit trace outer edge. You do not want to hit trace and detach. You just want a regular trace because there can be a lot of confusion when using those other two options. 
Now, if I move my design, you'll see that I have the red outline, which indicates that this is now set up as a cut file. Okay, that's exactly what I'm looking for because what I want to show you is the difference between these two when I go to cut. If I go to my send panel, you'll see that when I imported this image, all that would have cut is basically a square. But because I traced it, that's when I get all the individual cut lines that I need to actually cut out a pineapple shape. Now, it is very important to remember that just because you can trace something doesn't mean that you should. You always want to protect yourself by knowing what you can and cannot use, even if you're just at a hobbyist level or if you're a business. It is the nice thing to do as a fellow crafter, but it's also the legal thing to do and it keeps you from getting caught up in any type of litigation for using somebody else's design. Whenever in doubt, make sure that you're purchasing your designs from a reputable place and read their license. Make sure that you know what you're getting. And if you have questions, ask. I get my designs from designbundles.net. And the good thing is that I usually don't have to trace those because they're already set up the way that I need them to. But also, I know that I'm covered under their premium license. And I've gone in and I've read what that does and does not include. So definitely check that out. So another really important feature of Silhouette Studio is the ability to create an offset. Now, what is an offset? That term can often be confusing. An offset is the ability to create a border around your design. Okay, so what that means, I just created a small offset. I can now have that border of my exact pineapple. So you may be asking like, why would you actually want to do that? Well, a lot of times if you're creating a decal and you want to add some depth to it, let's fill these with colors and see what we think. Let's see, I'm going to do this one and let's just do a pretty pink, okay? A lot of times if you're doing a tumbler or you're working with a pattern, then you can create those offsets to give your design some definition. Ooh, that's a bright color. Let's change this to, let's do that in the pink. There we go. So that's a little bit better to see. But creating the offset is also really important, like when you're using text and different things like that. But it's different than just creating a duplicate of your design and making it a little bit bigger. It evenly follows your entire design all the way around to give you that really neat border. This is also very useful in print and cut, which I know we touched base on, um, but being able to use this with the print and cut means that you can cut around your own printable stickers or different things like that. So a lot of really useful features and you'll hear people talk about offset a lot um, as you start to use your Cameo more and more. Alrighty, so let's jump over and talk about using your print and cut feature. So the print and cut feature, you will often need to combine a variety of the skills that you've already used. So in particular, using the tracing, uh, because we are working with a clip art image, and then also using the offset, depending on the look that you're going for. So this is the pineapple. Remember, we used her earlier. And you remember, if I go over to my send panel, even if I turn on the cut lines, it just picks her up as a rectangle. So in order to be able to do a print and cut, because I need to be able to trim around her and not as a rectangle, I would first need to trace her. So I can select trace area. And remember when I said that you could remember about your threshold, this is where I can increase my threshold to incorporate my entire design. And then I can simply hit trace. And you see what happens? Okay. I can also, because we were talking about trace, I can use trace and detach. Now that gives me my pineapple and we can just simply delete um, the extra transparent backing. So now, when I go over to the send panel, it will trim around my pineapple, which is really good and that is completely what I want. So let's say, I don't know, let's say I wanna put this pineapple on a shirt, all right? The first thing that I need to do, 
I've already set up uh, where my cut lines will be, but I need to go back to my page setup. And remember, we want this to mirror what our mat is gonna look like. So I have the letter size sheet selected and I can come over here, your, next, or your last icon is registration marks. So I do have a cameo, so I'm going to select type one. And this is also where that cut and print border come in because I need to make sure that my pineapple is going to fit within my cuttable and printable area, okay, which it does. Um, the sheet will print out with these black marks on there. Those are your registration marks. And that is what your uh, Silhouette Cameo is going to detect in order to be able to cut around your image. Now there's one more thing to talk about. If you go back to the very front, this is uh, the first icon, your page setup, you do want to turn on print bleed. And what that is gonna do is it's going to give you a print bleed area a small amount around your design that will be shaded to mimic the colors of your design. And basically just know that when you turn on the print bleed, that way if your cut does not line up exactly where it needs to go, Silhouette Studio is kind of like, hey, I got your back and you won't get your awkward white border on part of your printable. And that's really important because you can't expect that the Silhouette Cameo is going to be you can't expect that the Silhouette Cameo is going to be 120% accurate all the time. It just is, you know, the way it has an optical lens and it has to detect everything. So it's better to have that print bleed on and give yourself that little cushion of area. Trust me, you will thank me for that later. Now, when it comes time to print, you are just going to use the either the print icon or go to file and print just like you would from anywhere else. And when you click over to your send panel, you're just going to cut just like you would anything else. So that part is really easy. Now, I won't say that print and cut is the easiest thing to do because sometimes there are extenuating circumstances or your machine doesn't want to register your registration marks or different things like that. So all of that will be um, you'll need to explore some troubleshooting options and just really don't be afraid to conquer it because there are so many things that you can use this print and cut feature for. Last but not least, let's go ahead and talk about upgrading your Silhouette Studio and why you would want to and what you would need to do to get that done. So Silhouette Studio comes with the basic free edition and you can see there are all these features on the left-hand side that are included for free. And that is absolutely fabulous. It is a good software all on its own. But there are several different upgrade versions. You have Designer Edition, which is the most common, Designer Edition Plus, which has a few added benefits if you are an embroiderer and you have embroidery files you want to use. And then Business Edition is like the ultimate. It unlocks all the features of Silhouette Studio and um, you get the full range of features and uses out of the software. So this comparison chart is on the Silhouette America website. So with that being said, once you decide which version of the software you would like to use, you will need to purchase an upgrade key. Now, I do recommend for you to shop around because there are some individual resellers who have really awesome prices that end up being about half of what you pay straight through the Silhouette America website. It's just something to keep in mind because then that's more money that you can spend on awesome designs and fonts, right? Okay, so when you're ready to upgrade, you've purchased it, they will give you an upgrade key code. And what you will do is you will go to help and right here, mine is grayed out because I am all the way up to business edition, but you can select upgrade Silhouette Studio and then you will simply register the key code with your login information for this account. And you have up to three computers that you can use that same key code license for. So how do you feel about Silhouette Studio now? Hopefully I didn't throw too much information at you, but there are just so many useful tools for you to use. And of course, like I said, it is a very robust software, so I know it can be a little overwhelming, but if you focus on the points that we talked about in the video, the rest will just fall into place. So now 
Like I said, if you do not have a Silhouette cutting machine, that is fine because we use Silhouette Studio for not only just cutting, I use it for designing my files, I use it for sublimation, I use it for designing planner pages. I mean, there's just so much that you can do once you learn the ins and outs of the software. So hopefully you learned a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more fun tutorials for you right around the corner to help you expand on that knowledge. Thanks for watching.